Hi everybody. Okay, this is a little continuation of the felting adventures um, here at my own little house. I did felt four hats and that was fun and I'll probably do more hats. Um, I don't need four hats, <laughs> but if I sell some of them at the farmer's market, then I might continue to felt some more hats. We'll see how that works. I really need an online shop. Oh, there, Leo, is, Leo is over there. Oh, let me turn, hang on. Oh, you can only see his tail. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised it's not twitching more. He's looking out the window because the chickens are right out there. Um, and they're down on the ground pecking around. That's where the water hose is. And it's shady. And so there's there's bugs, all kinds of bugs because <laughs> it's dark and moist. Anyway, um, hats. Oh, yes, an online store. Yeah, I should have one. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that would require too much work. And uh, all that. Anyway, felting. So, so I wanted to make slippers. I thought I had found a slipper pattern. It was a Norwegian pattern. It had kind of a fairy look with little triangular flaps that came off the ankle, uh, which I wasn't fond of, but it looked like the easiest pattern. And so I started into one of them and realized quickly that I didn't have enough yarn to make two of these for both my feet. <laughs> so I pulled all that out and put it back onto a ball. Okay, this is this is this yarn. Very scratchy wool. I know it's wool because it came in hanks and I still had the label on one of the hanks and oh, I wish I had saved it. I threw it out. I thought I know what I was doing, but it did. I very clearly said it was 100% wool and it was a brown, rustic, kind of old-fashioned, old label. Um, this stuff is clearly not super wash. It's not soft and, yeah. So I thought, this will felt. So I put, I, I decided since I wasn't gonna make slippers, I would make a pot holder because our pot holders are rubbish. We are burning our hands through these little cheap pot holders you get at you know the stores like Walmart or Target and they're thin, made out of fabric. And so I thought I will felt two layers of wool and put some canvas in between and sew it all up and I will have myself a great pot holder. So I started, using this same yarn and I knitted on size 11 needles and I knitted a nice big rectangle. It did felt a little bit, but it would be enough if it were a garment, it would shrink up enough you couldn't wear it, but it's not really, that's not felted as you can tell. It, you can still see the stitches and you can see through it. A little discouraging, but I'm also wondering if I didn't go far enough with my felting because I've heard that sometimes you have to keep on going. I put it through one Yes, one complete washer load on hot water with a towel. But I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna boil this puppy on the stove and see if I can get it to shrink anymore. Uh, because what am I gonna do with this? Like it's nothing. It's too scratchy for a baby blanket. <laughs> um, and it's way too holy to be a pot holder, even if I did it this way, and then it would be too small. I just, you know, it's useless. So I'm gonna see if I can, I was, I would have, I would have doubled it, see like this, but it would be smaller, hopefully. <laughs> That's kind of too big for a pot holder. Um, and then I would use it like that. Hmm. So let's go try boiling it. I'll let you know how it goes. In we go. It's not, the water that's in there is not quite boiling yet. And I'm gonna use these two wooden implements I'm to get, uh, I'm talking to my YouTube friends. Uh -huh. That's okay. <laughs> So I'm going to use these two wooden implements to give agitation and um, contact with something that will. But I've also got other water boiling on the stove that I'm going to pour on top of it. If that doesn't felt it, I don't know what will. We'll keep this at a nice boil. Mm, delicious. <laughs> All right, I'll show you 
when it's done. I boiled it and I boiled it. I boiled it until it released tons of dye and the water was deep green. <laughs> and it still looks like this. So all that to say, um, the tag said it was 100% wool. It may have been. Um, perhaps it was treated somehow I didn't know of. Perhaps they fit and it's a blend of some type. I couldn't tell you. All I know is that this is scratchy and not anything. Well, I don't think it's of any value. Um, if you can think of a use for this, <laughs> let me know. Maybe it'd be good for scrubbing pots, real big for scrubbing pots. Okay, so um, anyway, I'm going to have to move on in my felting adventures. I really am. I, um, I don't have to use felted wool to make pot holders. I could do that with uh, layers of cloth on my sewing machine. Maybe I'll do that. Um, so the next adventure will be to find uh, a pattern for slippers. Okay, so this is the thing. I spent a good bit of time watching a lady with a lovely YouTube channel um, who's a very good knitter, knitting a pair according to a pattern. And this was for felting. And she started with 63 cast on stitches on a circular needle. And she did kind of an oblong that was supposed to be the bottom, the sole. Okay, and she was gonna stitch up that oval later but she started it out that way, but she left it open so that she could turn it and stuff. So she did that and she did all kinds of fancy increases and decreases and talking about, well, do your decrease this way so you don't leave a little bar on the in the stitch and just all this rather intense knitting instructions. And even she commented several times, but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna get felted and you won't even be able to see the stitches. And so I thought, why are we doing all this very finicky knitting for something that's going to shrink way up and, and be a slipper? And the part that you're being finicky with is on the bottom of your foot. So, but I may live to regret that sentiment. Um, but I, I do want to see if I can. I know that it was a, a cast on of 63 stitches. That number stuck in my head. So I may try to just fiddle around with... Um, Hang on, let me get this yarn. This is the yarn I made that kind of, uh, is it a fuchsia? Is that right? Kind of a hot pink red hat with that didn't quite curl up like the others did and, and shrunk up a good bit. It's more of a child size or a very small woman size hat. Um, this is that same yarn. And so I know it will felt and shrink up and I may try this, but this isn't enough. Obviously I would have to use uh, an assortment of colors for a pair of slippers. We'll see. I think I have enough of it. I don't I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But if I end up with a pair of felted slippers, you will be the first to know. <laughs> well, my friends, I think it's time to get a little bit more serious about the felting situation. Let me show you uh, very briefly this yarn I've pulled out, this wool. You've seen all this before. I won't go into great detail. Um, this is all... All of this is single ply twisted. It's not, it's, it's not double plied. It's, yeah, it's not like that other wool that I've used a good bit of. This is the one I used to make that fuchsia colored hat. This is softer. This is probably some kind of merino. That's the same. This is the same. And I don't think this is. I think that's all I've got like that. It's a little softer. All the rest of this is a little bit uh, scratchier looking, but I don't trust that. And so I'm going to take the one, this brown one here, um, that I want to know if it will felt for the sole of my slippers, if I make slippers out of this. And so I'm, I have crocheted up just a little sample, just like it's a cast on in two rows. And I'm going to make take a picture of it and going then to, uh, put it in boiling water. I don't want to waste a whole load of laundry on washing this, but I do want to see if I can get it to felt. Um, it should felt up very small, about half that size with absolutely no holes left, and I shouldn't be able to see the individual stitches. We'll see if that works. That should tell me whether any of this other scratchy stuff will felt. If it doesn't, I need to find a different purpose for it. I can put it back in a drawer and wait for later. And um, then I'll need to get to uh, a good Michael store and get some good felting yarn. Hmm. All right, let's go do this and see what we think.
Well, I put that little sample in a Pyrex, poured boiling water over it with a little bit of dish soap, and just tortured it with this little wooden thing. Tortured it with the water on it, poured the water off, tortured it again, whipped it up like as if I were whipping some kind of a frosting or something. I will say the fibers do seem to look like they're trying to do something. I wouldn't say it's shrunk very much though. I can certainly still, let's see if I can keep it from dripping. I can certainly still see through it. it must be about the same size and I'm really, but it does look like it wants to felt. I'm wondering if I need to put it through a washer load with some other stuff. So I'm going to do some kitchen laundry, you know, on dish towels and stuff like that, pot holders, and put this in there and see if a uh, run through the washer makes this work. I would love for this yarn to be what I want it to be. I can't force it to be what I want it to be, but I've got to keep my investigation going. Hmm. Well, do you want to know what happened? Let's look at what happened. Okay, let me put my eyeballs on. Look at this. Now, I know it's got lint all over it. That's what happens when you <laughs> felt your wool with dishcloths, but look how tight that is. It is stiff and tight. You can still barely see through, but that's definitely well felted. I'm so excited. You know, Doing a little test swatch for felting is something that I am not normally inclined to do um, as a person because I'm impatient and I don't want to do little swatches and put it through the washer. But this is so worth doing because now I have discovered that all that yarn I showed you a minute ago down there, all of that yarn can be felted. And I'm going to, okay, I'm going to make slippers. I'm not going to do those... Um, crazy Norwegian slippers with the flaps on the side. I think I've decided against that. Um, but I am going to try to invent my own little pattern. Um, and they're going to be kind of color crazy and they won't match each other. I just want to let you know ahead of time, they won't match each other. So don't get your hopes up. And if you don't like things that are not matchy matchy, you might want to tune out for the next little bit <laughs> on the felting episodes. So look, it Felt. Let me turn it this way. That looks better. It felted. Arr. I'm so excited. I really am excited about this. Is that silly? Okay. And the good news is I've thought about what I want to make with this piece. I'm going <laughs> to gonna fold it in half like this. So it's kind of long. And I'm going to sew it up over here. I've already got my little needle ready here. And I'm going to sew it up over here a little bit. And it's going to be a tea cozy so I can slip it over the top of the cut of the pot and the spout will stick out over here and the handle will stick out over here and the bottom will be open and uh, it'll be as everybody should have a few of the world's ugliest tea cozy. <laughs> I think that might be it for this episode that, that this is probably a very good place to stop. See y'all next Okay, we are going to look at the beginnings of a felted slipper. Now what I've done, this I've done a lot of maybe six rows or so by now. This was the cast on and I am knitting it in the round so I don't have to do any purling. I just find this so much easier. This is the sole of the slipper and afterward, after I get done with all the knitting, I'm going to um, stitch this up and this will go along my foot. This is the toe down here. I put a little marker and the cast on here is at the heel. Now what I have been doing is increasing on either side of the end stitch. I, I cast on 63 so it's, there's, it's not quite exact because it's not an even number but I've just been uh, adding a stitch on either side of that point. Now uh, my foot is about four inches across for the sole uh, at the widest point and at the heel it's only about three and so of course I need to allow for shrinkage when I felt. So I want this up here at the widest point about here to be about seven inches across and I want this down here to only be five so I'm going to stop my increase down here 
and um, try to adjust my size so I can widen my increases down through the ball of the foot here. This is probably a terrible idea to try to do this myself, but I do enjoy the experimentation and adventure of this. The thing about knitting is I can always rip it out if it just looks terrible. And even if I felt two slippers and they don't fit or something, I haven't wasted anything very important. This is all, I think, pretty free yarn, if I recall, or almost free. This is the brown I'm using for the sole. I think I might even have enough for both slipper soles. And then I can pick my choice for the tops. Now this is the end of this particular felting adventure. And in this you will uh, see that I'm a terrible knitter. And this shows up all of my worst possible um, qualities as a craft person. <laughs> but what does it matter if you're doing it at home for yourself? If I were doing this for anybody else, I would never have done it. This has to do with the slipper project. And remember how I um, decided I would just launch into um, a well, it's not even a pattern. I just thought I would launch into a slipper using a cast on number and see if I could figure it out myself using this. Uh, remember the little teeny rectangle? We just saw that. Yeah. Okay. So when I took that slipper, it looked like a very gargantuan slipper, but I expected it to reduce proportionally to my foot. Kind of. It was a little big or a little small. I could work with that. I wasn't going to show you <laughs> the slipper that emerged from the washing machine because it looks like um, it's a it's a monster. Now I've already uh, done stuff to it, but I'll sh I'll give you I'll show you what it kind of looked like. This is kind of what it looked like. Okay, literally all of that. I've I've already cut it. I cut off this toe, whole toe. I just uh, did a massive um, amputation of the slipper because strangely. The part that I spent the least amount of time on that worked best and I winged it the most was this. The opening fits great. I'm not going to put it on my foot and show it to you. The toe is as ugly as a slipper could be. <laughs> it's the ugliest slipper in the world. But again, this was for me to muck about in the house, you know, and just something to stick on my feet. The problem is, how am I going to how am I going to replicate that for the other foot? Um, so I did. Uh, so what I did was I, I cut it off amputated it. I did a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine across there and then I went back and did um, a little bit of stitch work with some more wool and then turned it right side out. I'll wash it again I'm sure and it may cinch up and it may not you know it'll probably work. I can easily get it on my foot. I love this opening it's just perfect. The heel is fabulous. How did I do that? And then at the same time do that. I don't know. But you may wonder what's going to happen to the horrible toe end of that. Well, I looked at that and I thought, what can you do with that? It's lovely felted, especially the brown. The brown's beautiful felted. Well, I thought I would take, again, take some wool, purple this time, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to finish off this edge and felt it again because this is just I just cut it you can cut felted fabric um, but you wouldn't want to really leave it that way so I'm gonna finish this off felt it again and I think it's gonna be a little purse a little you know where your toes would go <laughs> a little purse uh, and put a little handle on this side and that side um, it'll be wonky it'll be something that you would see um, somebody wearing at a Renaissance festival slung around their neck I'm sure but it's not even symmetrical. I mean, like, look at that. It's got this big wonky part over here. So, uh, well, I don't know. But you, this is the kind of thing that is fun. I do enjoy it. I, I'm using a, a really big tapestry needle and kind of doing a bit of a, like a buttonhole edge or whip stitch kind of thing um, around the edge to give a little finish. Okay, well, that's it. That's as much as I'm going to show you about the slipper adventure right now. And if there is anything happy or beautiful to share <laughs> um, about the slipper. You know, you, we all know, I know we all know what I need to do. I need to find a pattern. 
I need to find the right yarn that the pattern recommends. I need to use the correct size needles and I need to count my stitches and I need to follow the pattern and I will end up with a lovely pair of slippers. And that really is probably what I'm going to do. Okay, so do not despair. I can follow directions if I try really hard. Well, I see the UPS guy coming. I 